Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today is a big day. Today is shop tour day. So we are going to do a, a tour of this room. This is the main room that I use here. Uh, as you all know, uh, well, most of you should know, I've said it many times. This room measures 11 by 11. It is a guest room in my home. Um, I also have some uh, standalone power tools down in the basement. We'll, sh we'll tour that as well. And I'll also give you a little tour of the uh, living room where I now have the Talking Head Studio set up. So uh, let's start with this room here. Um, this is the position you normally see me in here. I am standing in front of my workbench. We built this four or five months ago now. This is a two by four top that is built on top of uh, what is called the Craig Universal Bench System. I am, for the most part, happy with this bench. I. Uh, I wish I purchased 20 inch wide stretchers this way instead of 14, uh, but that's not Craig's fault. That's not the bench's fault. You know, they make all of these sizes so you can pick and choose what you want. Um, this is a little teetery this way, which if it was six inches wider, I think it would have resolved that problem. But if you watch the video where I built this, you heard me say that this is actually going to end up being the outfeed table for my table saw in the basement. Uh, when I build a proper bench for up here, and this is perfect for that. So I am perfectly fine with the way this bench is. I also built a cabinet for the base of uh, this bench. Okay guys, I spun the bench all the way around so I can give you a better view of the cabinet um, that I built under the bench. Here you can see it. Um, it has four sections, and in those four sections I have on the bottom section all of my Ryobi tools. And on the top section, I have the Ryobi batteries on one side, uh, and I have a little box I built that has a bunch of layout tools in it. So that is a, uh, that bench with that cabinet is pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with it. You know, as you can see, there's the bench top, and this is backwards to what you normally see. This is what I see standing at the back of the bench uh, with all the tools in there. A lot of, a lot of storage there. It's a, it's a, it's a good bench. The other thing that I can talk about while I'm using this camera here is the tool wall. And, you know, of course, I've got kind of a funny story about the tool wall. I, uh, for those of you that have watched a good amount of my videos, you know that I started doing videos on the tool wall. I did one about this chisel thing. I did one about these little uh, mallets hanging here. And then I kind of stopped. And... Uh, you know, it is what it is, guys. I am kind of a matter-of-fact uh, function, you know, get things done kind of guy. And I had just kind of started throwing things up on this wall. And it hit me when I was editing one day that that's the background to my YouTube channel. And it looks like hell. So I kind of stopped doing the tool wall videos. And I said, I got to figure out how to do that properly. And I haven't really gotten there yet. I have gone out and bought some paint. I am going to paint this piece of plywood. I'm going to leave the plane till here where it is because I got it screwed up there. Everything else is coming down. And I'm going to paint this thing and then we'll properly put tools back up there. I, I've decided I'm going to do it piecemeal, a couple of tools at a time. And as I do them, I'll film them. And in my monthly beginning of the month uh, video, I'll show you two or three minutes of each month's effort on the tool wall. And, you know, throughout the course of this year, we'll have a nice looking tool wall at the end of the year. Uh, I think that's an easier way of doing it than trying to do one 30 minute long this is my tool wall thing where I show you putting them all up there. Um, I'd rather do some of the other projects I've been talking about doing. So moving into this corner here, as you can see I have the clamp rack. Uh, we built this clamp rack a couple of uh, weeks ago, a couple of months ago now, and there are over 50 clamps on that rack, and it is very convenient. I'm very happy with it. I think we can sneak around here, and you can see that on the side of this cubby system, I have a level, I have a brush, I have a couple of tools that I use quite a bit. Uh, you know, my strop is there. And then we go to the cubby system itself, and you know what? I'm going to move the workbench so that we can get a better view of this. So I'm going to turn you off for a minute. Okay, guys, I have pushed the bench up against the wall, and I am now going to show you the rest of the room. Um, 
What you're looking at here is what I call a cubby system. It's basically, uh, as you can see, it is a, it's actually an Ikea um, cubby system that is full of supplies. What I have in here is all of my paints, sandpapers, see paper towels there. There is a, a box of chisels. I'm going to do a chisel video and I'll explain to you why I have a whole box of chisels. Um, you do see a microphone stand. You see the microphone up there. Uh, that normally is hanging right over the bench. I guess I'll show you the photography setup for this room now. As you can see up on the wall, I have two LED lights that hang from the wall on these stanchions, which are great because I can move these lights around anywhere in the room um, with that mic boom arm. Um, and the camera I normally use up here on this tripod attached to the wall. Um, you know, that, that tripod head is attached to a baby pin that's bolted to the wall. That is a Panasonic G7 with a 17 millimeter lens, which is the right focal length for here. So that Panasonic camera, the two LED panels and that mic stand, that's what does all the videos in here. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit more about this cubby system. I am not a fan of it at all, guys. It is a mess. It's too full. There's too much stuff in there. And obviously you could imagine if I'm trying to get something out of one of these two plastic bins. I mean, look at them. They are covered full to the top with stuff. If I need something on the bottom of one of those bins, it's a nightmare getting them out of there. Um, not sure how to make this better because there's just a lot of supplies in here that you just use once in a while. Um, and it's a pain. Um, I, I just don't know how else to put it. The only usable piece that I do get out of here is at the top. As you can see across the top here, I have the planes that I use that are not currently in my uh, plane till. And then I think you can see that there's some saws here. Uh, unfortunately, the saws are being mistreated right now, just laying on top of one another. Uh, don't do that. Guy. It's just horrible how I'm treating these saws. And uh, I need to build a saw till. There's no doubt about it. Um, moving on to the corner of the room, there's lumber storage there. As you can see, there's all the oak that we milled up a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago now. Um, and that's what happens in that corner. Um, moving on to this wall, I have, uh, you can see right there is my central machinery, which is Harbor Freight, uh, the five-speed eight-inch drill press. For the price of this tool, it's a very good tool. I mean, you, this is not going to win any awards in drill press land, but, you know, I don't do sanding with it. I don't put any sand discs in there. I don't drill metal with it. It cuts accurate holes in lumber, and that's all I do with it, and it does that fine. <clears throat> the next thing you see here is I have uh, my little one-inch, uh, uh, again, Harbor Freight uh, uh, belt sander. All of my battery uh, equipment is here. You can see in the back, there's a long power strip back there. Uh, interestingly, the camera is plugged into that power strip, too. It has a dummy battery in it, and it is... Uh, fully functioning all, all the time on uh, uh, house power, which is kind of nice. Um, the last thing I have in this corner of the room, I'm gonna move over here so you can see it, is the Rikon 10 inch bandsaw. And light's not great here, so I'm gonna move back over here. You know, this room is so small, guys, it's kind of hard to show you the full room. Uh, this little thing has a fairly wide-angle lens, but it kind of has a mind of its own with its gimbal, so it's kind of hard to aim at things. I love the Rikon bandsaw. You know, it's 10 inches. Uh, what this saves me in this room is the ability to rip a three or four uh, foot long board um, without having to run down to the basement and use the basement to do it. Um, I love my hand tools. I am a hybrid woodworker. I will definitely call myself a hybrid woodworker, but I, uh, I, I am not a fan of ripping lumber with a handsaw. So I love that this bandsaw is up here. <clears throat> There's the entry door to the, to the uh, room. And then the final wall, uh, you can see I have a workmate with a couple of, uh, 
uh, tools down there. That's my Craig jig in the great pouch and some um, hole saw bits that I purchased in that orange uh, pouch. Um, on top of the workmate is the old bench top top. The old bench top, I guess is the way to put it. And three sanders. I have the rigid oscillating uh, sander. Uh, the You can barely see the Harbor Freight disc sander. Um, in the middle there, it has some lumber on its table right now. And a 3x36 uh, belt sander as well. Uh, I am going to get rid of the workmate and the tabletop. At least get them out of here. And I am going to move... Uh, the rigid to a cabinet that I'm going to build here. I'm going to build a base cabinet and a wall cabinet on this wall and hopefully store a bunch of this stuff in the cubby on the wall cabinet and the sander can, the, the rigid sander will sit on top of the base cabinet. Um, that I hope will make, uh, make this room a little bit easier to function. Um, this last corner over here has a closet. There's some lumber in the closet. You can see down there I have a trash can and a broom. Uh, my newest purchase is sitting there on the wall. I don't know if you can make that out. It is the woodpecker um, two foot long uh, uh, T-square. Um, bought that back in January. Uh, kind of excited. Uh, it, is a, it is a luxury item, I will say that. But I... I I, uh, I enjoy the woodpecker tools. I can't afford to have a whole shop full of them. Um, and I buy one a year. That's what I reward myself with. And this is the one I got this year. Um, so that's the shop up here, guys. We're, we're back to the bench. The bench normally sits right here. And uh, I've got it shoved up against the wall right now. Uh, so we just did a lap of this uh, room. It's very small. Uh, so let's go down to the basement and take a look at that. Hey everybody and welcome to the dungeon. Today we are going to continue the uh, shop tour. Yesterday I did the uh, upstairs 11 by 11 room. Today I am doing the dungeon. Uh, I call this the dungeon affectionately because I have a love-hate relationship with this part of my house. Uh, unfortunately this house is 70, year old, 70 years old now and it has some uh, foundation issues that things get wet down here from time to time. Um, it's frustrating. I did have one wall replaced down here at an astronomical cost, uh, and I just don't have the cash to do the rest of the leaks, uh, obviously, so I live with it. Um, I have two sump pumps in this property, one outside the house and one inside the house, and they take care of the water. I mean, if it does get in here, it goes right back out. I. Uh, it's the reason I work upstairs now. Um, I do the hand tool work upstairs in a controlled environment where it's easier. Down here, it gets hot, it gets cold. It's usually nice in the summer because it's chilly down here. This time of year, it's a little cold down here. Um, I could put a heater down here, I just don't. Um, it, it's it's sustainable. It's I could work down here all day and not you know freeze. As you can see, I got my sleeves rolled up right now, so it's not horrible. And you know, it's it's. Uh, it's what the last day of March today, second last day, or excuse me, the second last day of February. So, you know, we're in winter, and I'm doing it. So it's not the end of the world. Um, this is a machine shop down here. This is woodworking power tools. Um, the the center of most woodworking shops is a table saw, and that's no different in my shop. I am standing at my table saw right now. This is probably the view you've seen me most when I shoot down here. Um, I love this table saw. This is a Delta um, contractor's uh, table saw with a 30 inch to the right side uh, extension table. Um, I do not have an outfeed table on it, but I do have a uh, little outfeed uh, stand that I can move back there if I need outfeed help. As you know, I said the bench that we built upstairs will be the outfeed table for this thing at some point. And if you notice, I'm leaning on this table saw kind of like I lean on my bench upstairs. And this dimension here very neatly matches the dimension I made the top of that bench up there. So when it comes down here, it will very easily fit there. I'll put casters on it, and it will be able to move back and forth to be the outfeed table for this table saw. <clears throat> I am now going to move to this side of the room. I'm going to move the light and move the camera for you, so we'll be there in a minute. All right, guys, uh, I just moved the camera around. The table saw is right here. I don't know if it's in the corner of your view or not. But 
here is where I was standing a minute ago. Now I've just moved um, five paces back from the table saw. And you can see I'm already getting to the end of the room. Here's my lumber storage. What I have in this room is, uh, honestly, you can see here, there's the remnants of a tool wall. There's still plenty of tools on it, but most of them that were here went upstairs. I used to have a bench right here. And before I had that room upstairs, this is where I worked. I had a bench here, which really made this room cluttered. Um, now that I'm upstairs, it's a lot nicer. These tools didn't make it upstairs yet. And as you can see, I don't have room for them upstairs. Um, my clamps, uh, I have them all stacked here right now because they are going to get incorporated into this wall. Um, the rest of these tools will get moved and this will become a clamp rack. And all of these clamps will be hanging here. Uh, I have a sawtill up there. I think you can see that. Um, there's still plenty of hand planes up here. Um, and then moving on to more of what we're here to see on this side of the shop is here is where I have my 14 inch delta bandsaw. It is on a wheel, uh, a little base. I can move this thing around the room where I need it. So when I don't use it, it when it's operating, it goes back like that in that corner. Um, when I need it, I wheel it out here in the middle of the room and use it. Uh, other than that, uh, you can probably see the beginning of my wood storage, but that's all that's going on on this side of the room. So let me move the camera again and show you that side. <clears throat> okay, I am now hiding over in this corner. I am uh, literally about uh, seven feet from the back of the table saw, right in the middle of the room. And you're now seeing the left side of the room. And what you should be seeing here is my lunchbox DeWalt planer, which is not yet on wheels, but it really needs to be on wheels because I'm sick of picking this thing up and moving it around. Um, this is a tool that may or may not be with me too much longer. I have a love-hate relationship with this. Um, its primary problem is it is not on a proper stand, and that's not its fault. <laughs> but I am toying with the idea of replacing it with a newer one that has maybe a better uh, blade system on it. This blade system is really difficult to change, and that is why I haven't changed it yet, and I need desperately to change the blades in this tool. Um, it functions, but it's problematic. The tool that I probably love more than any other tool in this shop is right here. This is my DeWalt radial arm saw. This is a tool from, I believe, the 1940s, but I haven't actually dated it perfectly. Um, it, is, uh, it, it is a wonderful tool. I prefer using the radial arm saw to a uh, chop saw, you know, compound sliding miter saw, uh, you know, all the names that those tools go by. I prefer this tool. I set this tool up many years ago and it just now cross cuts lumber perfectly, accurately, every time. Um, <clears throat> it's just a godsend tool. If, to be perfectly honest with you, if I ever moved out of this house, I would sell almost every tool in here, but this would move with me. The other tools are very uh, replaceable. Uh, I don't have much sentimental value to them. I do have a little bit to my drill presses. And one of them is in storage right now, and you can't really see it. It was my grandfather's. It's an old King Sealy uh, Craftsman drill press. Um, I will uh, try to get a picture of it and put it up here. And the other one is right over there. We're going to go see it in a second. Um, that's all that happens here in the back of the shop. Um, you know, I need the open space back here in case I'm ripping something eight feet long. You know, I need to be able to come back here and go through the table saw. So... Uh, the bandsaw, like I said, is on wheels. I can get it out of the way. The radial arm saw is out of the way, and this guy, albeit not on wheels, I can Herculesly and pick it up and move it around, which I am getting extremely fed up with. Um, I do also have wood storage uh, that we can see back in that corner. There's quite a bit of lumber leaning up against that wall. <clears throat> a good amount of it is cherry. I will... Uh, I will clean that up a little bit. I am getting ready to do a video on the cherry uh, because I'm about to build a table for upstairs in the Talking Head studio out of cherry. And what I decided I'm going to do is act like this is a lumber yard and I'm going to show you how I go through selecting lumber in the rough cut fashion. And uh, we'll talk about how lumber's graded, we'll talk about the thicknesses of lumber and how it's measured and sold and all of that. And I will go through selecting the lumber I'm going to use to build the table. I'll lay it out. 
I will build a cut list for it and we'll go through all of that so you know how to buy lumber, how to buy extra lumber because you never quite just buy what you need or if you do you might be in trouble. So that'll be all in a future video. So I'm going to move to the other side of this room now and this will be all new territory for you because we've never seen that side of the room. Okay guys, welcome to the other end of the shop. You've never seen this end before because I always shoot over there where the table saw is, but this is another workbench area I have that um, is nice, but obviously it's limited in space because I'm trapped here. Um, I'll show you this side in a little bit, um, but there's a bathroom right there, so this side of the room is much thinner than, uh, you know, I'm reaching out touching this wall here and I have about four feet till I'm touching that wall, so it's maybe nine or ten feet wide compared to 16 feet wide back there. Um, the first thing you can see is another King Sealy Craftsman uh, drill press. That one's a bench top style. And I just noticed this the other day. The bench that it's on is falling apart. You can see that's leaning back a little bit. Maybe it's not clear to you, but that thing's leaning backwards. Um, obviously, I need to fix that. Um, that cabinet it's on, surprisingly, was the cabinet that when I bought this house, that was the bathroom sink cabinet. Um, yes, it's gray and pink. I don't know if you can see that, but obviously I redid the bathroom, got rid of the gray and pink, pink features. Uh, and it had been uh, sitting there holding uh, my drill press for the past uh, 18 years. It finally gave up the ghost. I mean, that's a heavy drill press. Um, I'm going to have to move it when I stop filming here and get it uh, onto something secure. Um, but it, I tested it. It's, it's not going anywhere. It's pretty stable. Um, on this bench, I have my six inch portable joiner. Um, this joiner is, uh, and this is the light electrical here, it's not normally dangling across the bench. Um, this tool is a very good tool for what it is. Now we have to remember that it is a portable bench top joiner. It is per a perfect tool for somebody that is, you know, a hobbyist doing making boxes and bird houses, you know, small things like that, where you're using three to four foot lengths of lumber as your maximum length. Uh, this is a perfect tool for that. It does a good job on that size lumber. The problem is I use six, eight, and 10 foot lumber sometimes, and it is not good for that. Um, it just doesn't handle it well. <clears throat> so I have to upgrade this tool, and it's the first tool that I will be upgrading. Um, and I'm going to talk about that when I get upstairs. Um, this bench was kind of a godsend. Uh, uh, it was, <clears throat> it's a funny story, when I bought this house, uh, this basement was not finished, there was no room over there, it was a wide open space. And when I viewed the house, there was just a big pile in this corner. It was piled up this high. And I looked at my realtor and he's like, they'll have to move that, don't worry about it. I was like, okay, um, you know, and I kind of forgot about it, didn't give a crap. Um, closing day came and the pile was still there. And my realtor looked at them and said, well, <laughs> you're going to have to go move it. You know, we're going to have to hold this up. And they were like, oh, we really need to close today. Is there anything we can do? And they negotiated a $500 deduction in, you know, a payment, basically. They paid me $500 to move the junk. And I came down here and took the first couple of pieces out of here. And lo and behold... There was a 12 foot long by three foot deep by two and a quarter inch maple workbench here. So I was like, I just got paid $500 to get myself the greatest workbench ever made. That was a great deal. I put this vice on here. I don't know if that's in view. Um, and it's been here ever since and I've used it as a workbench. Obviously, workbenches become traps for things. You can see back, I don't know if you can see all the way to the corner yet. Uh, let me adjust the camera for you. <clears throat> Yeah, you're seeing all the way to the corner. Uh, as you can see back in the corner, it's piled with crap because I usually work on this end. This six or eight feet is where I do my work, and the other end is just stuff piles up. So it is what it is. It's a workspace that unfortunately has uh, crap always piled on it, and there's no way for me to get around it because of uh, unfortunate more stuff than space. So I'm going to shut you down one more time and show you the last section of this room. All right, guys, I am actually hand-holding here because there's just no way to get the tripod over there. Um, what you're seeing is two cabinets up on the ceiling here. That wall is the bathroom wall. So the bathroom's on the other side of this wall. And I hung two cabinets up here. Um, <laughs> the third one that was in the middle fell off the wall, and there it is there. And it ended up leaning down and was leaning on my lathe. 
I don't I think I'm hoping I'm holding this still enough for you. This is my Nova 16 by 24 dash 44 uh, lathe. It is a, a one and a half horsepower motor. It is a beautiful lathe. Down on the ground below it was my old lathe, uh, an old 10 inch uh, Delta MIDI. This lathe is going to be in some videos soon. I love this lathe. Uh, I think wood turning is fun. I believe it is a part of woodworking, but it's not a major part of my woodworking, so you haven't seen me turn yet. Uh, I turn for fun. I like to turn some bowls. Um, it, it, it's fun. Um, you do have, you know, you can do table legs, you know, finials. There is a use for a lathe in woodworking. Um, unfortunately, the two lathes that I own here, if you notice, one of them, they're both about 20 to 24 inches in length. The reason that model number is 1624 is it's a 16 inch swing. So I can put a 16 inch hunk of wood on there and turn it into a bowl and it has 24 inches between centers. So I can only turn a table leg 24 inches long. Um, that's unfortunate. They do make an extension bed that I will purchase at some point. It's, it's ridiculously priced at like $250, $300. But I will get it and then I can do table legs. Not an issue for the table we're about to start building because that's going to have tapered legs. So um, while I'm holding the camera, I can tell you that this camera is one of many that come down here. Um, I mentioned before I am a, I am a uh, photographer. And I'm walking around the shop just to give you one more walk around tour of the whole thing, more in a vlog type view. There's more lumber storage. Uh, back here, I hope this will come out. There is my grandfather's King Sealy uh, drill press. That is functioning. I just moved it back there because I need to do a upgrade on it I need to make it uh, I need to make it uh, I need to, it needs a cleaning and lubing is what it needs uh, and I just haven't gotten around to it here's the uh, old tool wall again here's the back of the table saw um, you see here I have a very old tripod that I use um, I don't use any quality photography equipment down here because uh, things break down here the lighting I use down here and I don't know how this is going to come out uh, that light is a very cheap uh, dome light that has a uh, cheap light stand and inside there is not LEDs that is four fluorescent bulbs so it's a light fixture made for photography that has four normal light bulb sockets in there and there are uh, four CFL uh, they're photography bulbs they're 55 degree Kelvin bulbs built for photography um, and that's the shop basically guys this is uh, the basement so let's go upstairs and Let's do a uh, look at the uh, Talking Head Studio, and that'll end the tour. Hi guys, uh, I'm going to just finish the uh, shop tour up up here in the Talking Head Studio since it is now part of my channel and I do film here. Um, there's no woodworking going on here, so this will just be a couple of minutes where I talk about finishing up the uh, tour. Because I had mentioned down in the basement that there's going to be some changes, and there are going to be some significant changes. Um, there is a 16 by 20 room down there that uh, is uh, not in use right now. It's storage. And I am going to get rid of everything down in there, clean it up. I used to rent the room out, and the person that lived there doesn't live there anymore. And unfortunately, he left his junk when he left, and I just got to throw it away. It's been there for a while. He moved out quite a while ago, and I just haven't messed with it. I don't use the room. Uh, so now I'm going to use it. I'm going to make it my machine room. I am going to move... <clears throat> The table saw in there and the planer in there and I am going to purchase a new jointer. Uh, I have been shopping for a while. I'm looking on Craigslist because I have a specific need for a, a 110 volt 8 inch jointer which isn't really made anymore. Um, my house is uh, electric and natural gas and because of that uh, I don't have any uh, 220 outlets here. Everything that would have been a 220 outlet, the dryer, the stove, the furnace, the hot water heater, they're all uh, 110 with gas. So because I have gas, I don't need 220 anywhere. So I either need to buy a 110 8-inch joiner, which Powermatic and Delta did make back in the day, or I need to uh, have an electric electrician put an outlet in, which is probably the route I'm going to end up going. Um, so whichever, whatever happens, I will have the table saw, the outfeed table, which is over in the uh, room here right now as my bench, a new jointer and probably the same planer unless I find it needs to be replaced. Uh, in that room, um, 
and the radial arm saw will stay where it is, the Nova lathe will move to where the table saw is now. That'll leave me more room to work at the bench down there and free up a lot of space on the other side where I'm hoping to build an assembly table. Uh, so that's all planned for this summer. So that's the shop tour. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you like this. I know some people enjoy these and some people don't. I'm assuming if you don't, you're still not here because this is like a half hour long. Um, but anyway, those of you that uh, watched through this whole thing, thank you very much. Please like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and uh, I will show a little click video of the camera on its tripod, this light, and the background here, because I've shown uh, the, the camera equipment I've used in, in the other two places, just so you can see what I do here. Okay, guys, a uh, little uh, quick photography uh, 101 here for the uh, uh, talking headroom. As you can see, the background is situated on a pair of Manfrotto auto poles that have Manfrotto super clamps, which I'll zoom in on here. These super clamps are holding uh, this piece of PVC pipe that I have clamped the background to. That takes up almost no room in the room. The light, that is a LED light. It's a very good light. And here is the camera that I use in this room. This is currently the EOS M5 with a Rode uh, microphone on it and an old uh, Bogan tripod. So that's the... Uh, that's the photography pieces for this room, guys. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you.